On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including SpaceX prepares for major Starship testing, NASA purchases Orion crew capsules for the Artemis 6, 7, and 8 moon missions, and spacewalks are safe to resume on the ISS. There's lots to go over this week, so let's get going. This is The Space Race. Stacking maneuvers with the Starship and Super Heavy rockets continued this week at Starbase Boca Chica, with SpaceX technicians seeding, unseeding, and then reseeding Starship 24 onto Booster 7. You might remember the excitement from last week when, on October 12th, SpaceX stacked Ship 24 and Booster 7 for the first time. Speculation was running wild, and everyone, including ourselves, were sure something big was about to happen. Then, they detached the vehicle. On Sunday the 16th, the team unseated Ship 24 and lowered it. Work was then seen being done to the launch mount and other ground support equipment before we saw the whole thing restacked again on October 20th. Look, sometimes us SpaceX fans get excited, especially when we have to guess at a company's intentions. However, there is plenty of evidence to suggest that all we misjudged was the timing as usual. Starbase observers were also looking at the flurry of activity in Boca Chica and thinking we might be close to something like a full-scale burn or a wet dress rehearsal for the full stack. One of the biggest indications that we might be close to something that huge, aside from the full stack itself, was the lineup of fuel trucks unloading at the tank farm. SpaceX has been bringing in way more fuel than usual, and that can only really mean that we're about to see a full stack fueling attempt. In total, a full stack of Starship would take about 1,060 metric tons of liquid methane and about 3,800 tons of liquid oxygen. So when we see a long line of fuel trucks at Boca Chica, we can be sure that it's all being brought in for a very specific reason. So, why bring in all that fuel and fiddle with the stacking mechanism if we weren't going to see a fueling attempt? The most likely answers come from a review of recordings during the seeding attempts. If you look closely, there seems to be some lean and sway to Booster 7 as Ship 24 settles onto the mount pins. Now, with this much weight, there's always going to be some movement involved during these maneuvers, but a lean like this could be catastrophic for a launch. As if to confirm this, a tweet from SpaceX CEO Elon Musk in response to some questions showed that SpaceX was being very cautious with how they move forward. Meanwhile, SpaceX has been working on ship production. Ship 27, 28, and 29 were all spotted under construction recently, and Ship 25 was lifted onto a testing stand on the 20th as well for cryogenic testing. So they have plenty of backups there. But... SpaceX only has one mount fit for testing launches. Pad 39A at Cape Canaveral isn't complete yet and is in an area too sensitive for Starship testing. As Elon points out, a rapid unscheduled disassembly, aka explosion, here could set testing back by as much as six months, and that's probably a conservative estimate. So SpaceX is taking things a little slowly, and... In this case, that's definitely for the best. After Ship 24 was reseeded on the 20th, we saw a Raptor engine swap on Booster 7 and, likely remembering what happened to the SLS, a test of the quick disconnect system. They're really taking no chances here. So, SpaceX is clearly all primed for some tests that require lots of fuel and a full stack. The most likely course of events is that the SpaceX team will attempt a full fueling of the stacked vehicle and then de-stack to make some burn attempts with a larger amount of Booster 7's engines. The folks over at NASA Spaceflight think that it's likely we're going to see Booster 7 get a couple of static fires, opening up more and more engines until we hit the full 33 engine burn. This would help test the booster and the launch mount sound dampening tech to ensure it's working before a fully stacked test. It would also give Ship 24 a chance to get some full fueling attempts done, which would help test its thermal protection system or heat shield during engine ignition. Those tiles have been replaced recently as they were popping off at a dangerous rate. And of course, 
SpaceX is continuing to test and construct other Starships and boosters while all this is going on, so they'll be ready to commit to a steady pace once flight testing has started. As for when that happens, Elon seems to think late November is achievable, but given the amount of testing left to be done, we wouldn't be surprised to see this date slip to December or even February 2023. Maybe we'll get a Starship launch for the holidays. We are big fans of everything related to the exploration of space, obviously, but none of that would be possible without math and science. So I've been using our sponsor Brilliant to continue learning more about the important topics that relate to the channel. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, science, and computer science interactively, skip the boring textbooks, and start using Brilliant today to explore thousands of lessons with exclusive new content added each month. Brilliant helps you learn specific skills and how to be a better thinker, which comes in handy as a YouTuber. Learning about data science helps us better understand the data from our analytics, and the science courses help us better understand the more complicated information we need to make it digestible for our audience. Learning a little every day helps increase neuroplasticity, so you're not only learning new skills, you're staying healthy as well. We urge our viewers to stay sharp, continue learning new skills, and always keep an open, curious mind, which is why we love Brilliant so much. You can learn at your own pace, and the courses range from beginner all the way up to advanced college-level content, so you can take advanced courses at a fraction of the price you would pay at college and save yourself four years of time. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org slash the space race or click on the link in the description. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription, so act fast before they run out to save yourself some money. And now, let's get back to the video. NASA has ordered three additional Orion crew capsules from aerospace giant Lockheed Martin for about $1.99 billion. The three new vehicles are officially earmarked for the Artemis 6, 7, and 8 moon missions. This deal locks in the Orion team into the Artemis missions for the foreseeable future, as the purchase of the capsules includes mission planning and support. The Orion capsule is the workhorse of NASA's Artemis moon missions and is currently planned as the crew vehicle of choice for all of the Artemis missions. But considering the recent troubles of the SLS system Orion is meant to launch on, this purchase seems a bit optimistic. The capsule itself is an amazing piece of engineering, able to carry a crew of 4-6 to six astronauts for 21 days. The crew module of Orion is designed for Apollo-style missions. It has its own solar panels for power generation, it's got an automated docking system, it has almost twice the pressurized volume as SpaceX's Dragon capsule, and can be married to several other support modules to extend habitable space, power generation, and storage capacity. And this is where Orion truly shines. It's designed to be used in a variety of situations with a range of other vehicles. It can even be launched by other rockets, which is good considering the issues with the current block configuration of SLS. A lot of this versatility is down to how Orion was developed. It was originally conceived as the crew capsule of the doomed Constellation Moon program from the late 2000s. When that program went belly up in 2009, Lockheed Martin just sort of kept developing their capsule. They've been launching this vehicle since the summer of 2009 in various forms, and now it is easily one of the most reliable crew capsules we have access to. Orion was made to take us to the moon, so when November 14th gets here and Artemis 1 goes for its next launch attempt, we really hope the SLS will finally be able to get this capsule into space where it belongs. After spending almost 7 months on the bench, NASA has given the go-ahead to resume spacewalks on the International Space Station. Some of you might remember that back in March, ESA astronaut Matthias Maurer was completing some work just outside the ISS when he reported a nightmare scenario. Water was pooling on the visor of his spacesuit. Maurer kept calm and was able to get back inside before the fluid had pooled too deep, but the incident caused NASA station managers to halt all spacewalks immediately. And in May, they announced that routine spacewalks would be cancelled until an investigation could discover a source. For that, Mars' suit needed to be transported back to Earth for testing, and it made the trip back on a SpaceX Dragon cargo capsule back in August. 
After analysis, the suit's hardware was found to be functioning normally. NASA techs believe there's a problem with a couple of smaller systems, such as the crew cooling system, in addition to the exertion of the wearer that caused more condensation to be produced than the system could handle. Warm air holds more moisture, and of course, our bodies put out a fair amount of that as well. So, it seems that when the NASA EMU suits started cooling the astronauts, condensation was drawn out of the suit's air faster than the suit could deal with it. Moisture in suits is something NASA's had to deal with for its entire existence. With regards to the EMUs, NASA had been getting the astronauts to wear absorption pads on their heads to combat the condensation. In response to this most recent issue, it looks like NASA is going to be sticking to that strategy. NASA announced that it has updated its procedures and developed new mitigation hardware to help absorb excess moisture that should allow spacewalks to continue. Back in March, when this issue first came to light, there was a lot of talk about the aging EMU suits and NASA's attempts to replace them with more modern ones. It's a daunting task, even if you ignore condensation, there's a ton of conditions a suit needs to cover to be space capable. In June, NASA awarded contracts to Axiom Space and Collins Aerospace to design new suits for the ISS and the upcoming Artemis moon landings. So far, Axiom was awarded the contract to develop suits for the moon, but nothing as of yet for the ISS. However, the NASA techs do seem to have a handle on the issue with the current EMUs, so they'll have to do for now. There are several spacewalks planned for later this year, most of which involve work with the solar panels. We hope there aren't many more condensation issues for the crew of the ISS, but regardless, it looks like the EMU might have to be retired inside the next couple of years. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.